The New York Police Department begins the new year with a familiar face in charge. Commissioner Bill Bratton brought a longtime aide back to the force. John Miller was Bratton's chief spokesman during his first tour as NYPD commissioner in the 1990s. When Bratton became police chief in Los Angeles, Miller followed him to the West Coast. And just last week, Miller became Bratton's deputy commissioner for intelligence after stepping down from CBS News. John Miller and Commissioner Bratton are with us this morning, and we're very pleased to have them here. I begin with a congratulations to Thank you. both of you. We miss you. Well, good morning. Uh, nice good to morning. be back. <laughs> the table is familiar. Breakfast uh, is still the same. In the <laughs> and uh, the menu hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still enjoying it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the man who appointed you, Mayor Bill, uh, Bill de Blasio, campaigned against stop and frisk. Uh, how are you, the man who leads the New York Police Department, going to change stop and frisk? Well, first, uh, Mayor de Blasio didn't campaign against stop and frisk. He campaigned to reform it. He and I both believe there was too much of it being used in the city, and uh, it was creating great alienation, particularly in many of the minority communities. So the ref reformation, if you will, of it is to ensure that it's being done legally, being done respectfully, and we'll now have an inspector general and possibly a monitor. So we'll have to work with them to ensure that those conditions are in fact met. So will you end stop and frisk? Not at all. That's stop and frisk. That'd be like you trying to interview without asking a question. Mm -hmm. That's what police do. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but it'll be, it was already significantly less of it occurring in the city. Crime numbers are staying pretty uh, level, so we're not seeing a dramatic increase as some had predicted in crime. Uh, no, stop and frisk is an essential tool. Uh, we're just going to try to do a better job of training our officers and supervising them. So what then, what will you change? I mean, I know you're saying you're talking about reformers, but what specifically will you change? Well, a couple of things. that uh, Better training as to what is reasonable suspicion. When can you, in fact, legally stop somebody? Uh, you have to suspect that they have uh, or are about to commit a crime. There are many African Americans, many black people who think that they're suspected more often than others. That's correct. And unfortunately, however, that uh, the reality is in some of the poor neighborhoods of the city, most of which are minority communities, the rates of crime are higher, so there's much more police activity than you would have, say, in the streets of Manhattan. That's just the reality of the city. Mm -hmm. But to deal with that, you have to ensure that the officers at all times are doing it the correct way. Mm -hmm. And there's a strong belief, both within the department and mm -hmm. within the communities, that that was not happening. Mm -hmm. uh, many people do believe that it was one of the reasons that Mayor de Blasio was elected early on. He made it mm -hmm. a, a big campaign issue. Right. Um, why did you hire John Miller? Because he's the best. That uh, There are two issues uh, facing New York City all the time. Dealing with crime, fear, and disorder, traditional. And because we are the most uh, likely terrorist target in the world, that the concerns about terrorism. John created for me, when we worked together in the LAPD, uh, that city's counterterrorism operation right after 9-11. Did a phenomenal job to the extent that LA's uh, counterterrorism operation next to New York's is the best in the country. Proportionally, almost as many officers in that smaller department as New York's. So while he's best known for his journalism and journalistic credentials, John is uh, the best in terms of in dealing with this issue of counterterrorism intelligence. But most importantly for me, collaboration. The secret is you have to work together. And some of the issues with New York is that it does not work as well as it should with collaboration between agencies. police departments and, and, and the FBI agencies. and those kinds of mm -hmm. things. Look at all the hats he wore: FBI, DNI, that uh, LAPD. And why are people saying, "Well, he doesn't have the same required skills as other people who had this job"? I'm not sure people are saying that. That was one article okay, in, fair in, yeah. in one newspaper that quoted one anonymous source who speculated. And then a woman, they stopped walking down the street Who in Brooklyn. Who was that woman, by the way? Have <laughs> you tracked her down yet? That, uh... Well, you know, strangely, a um, detective from the intelligence division picked her up and treated her to a PowerPoint that went about an hour long about my credentials, and then she was dropped off near her home. If you found her today, she says very nice things. No. Okay. Not really. <laughs> I'm kidding, Charlie. Well, that's, okay? that's awesome. <laughs> Stay with me. I know. I know. No, I know but, you're no, but as you know, you're right. It was it was one story in the New York Daily News um, that said that the in, the qualifications between you and your predecessor, the gap was staggering. That so, your predecessor so, had four decades. Yeah, so you of, can you can look at resumes. Um, they have a certain value on paper, or you can look at deeds. Um, what the New York Times did when they did the same story was they talked to several dozen people who had worked with my operation in Los Angeles at the FBI in Washington um, mm -hmm. as a senior national intelligence officer in Washington 
And what you got was a very different story there about the effectiveness of those operations. So um, outside of saying, you know, okay, I'm human, it hurt yeah. my feelings, uh, there's no there there. Yeah. 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 And one of the things we loved having you here was the fact that you had contacts across the spectrum of law enforcement. Uh, let me turn to one aspect of, of, I assume, his responsibilities. It is surveillance of Muslim groups. Mm -hmm. That also has been a source of criticism of the NYPD under Commissioner Kelly. Part of what we'll be doing these first couple of weeks on the job is taking an in-depth look at what has the department, in fact, been doing, what's known publicly, what's uh, happening that has not been publicly disclosed, uh, sometimes for appropriate reasons, so that my comfort level is uh, satisfied, along with John's, that what we are doing is appropriate to the threats, what we are doing is sensitive to the conditions in New York relative to its uh, Muslim community. So we're in the process of that. John literally just started two days ago? Three days I, ago. I started three days ago, so that uh, we're really just beginning that process. Can I ask you, because New York is America's largest city because uh, of 9-11, uh, New York's a target, and you see some of the, the target threats that are out there. I know you've been on the job for just three days, but talk about that cooperation with the NSA. How much of the intelligence that the NSA collects gets filtered through you and to the New York Police Department? On some level, the answer is we don't know, and that's because the NSA collects intelligence, which then goes to the rest of the intelligence community. So the NSA wouldn't give any intelligence to the NYPD. It would give intelligence in finished analysis, um, and sometimes raw intelligence to the FBI, which would then pass that on to the, to the NYPD. Um, it's uh, rarer that you actually drill backwards to sources and methods unless you, unless you have something that uh, you really need to know where it came from. Are there serious threats against this city and from whom? Um, all threats against the city are serious till they're resolved. Um, one of the things I was talking about with my team the other day is when you're in the threat mode, when you're in the middle of it, 99% um, of the time you wash it out, um, but in the middle of it, uh, there's no difference between how you work that threat uh, if it turns out to be nothing than when it turns out to be a real threat. Um, a lot of that is figuring out where did this come from, how can we verify it, what do we know about the source, and so on. Are you in your heart a journalist or a law enforcement official? Um, I would recast that question to say, am I a journalist or an intelligence officer, only because there's almost no difference. Intelligence is nothing more than understanding a problem. Intelligence with very good analysis is understanding a problem well enough to do something about it. That means collecting the facts, analyzing them down to what do they mean, what's the potential effect, and what's the potential response. The work of intelligence officers and um, reporters is extraordinarily similar. Hmm. You become a briefer. You tell your boss, here's the bottom line. Yeah. These are the potential responses. That's kind of what you all do. Indeed. Um, would you have taken this job? if you knew that you couldn't convince him to join you? I would not have, being quite frank with you. That uh, the, uh, it was basically I would, I would have fun. urged him to do I it anyway. You, but you wouldn't have, would you? I would not have, no. Thank you for joining us. All right, good luck. Thanks for having us. Can I come back? No. <laughs> <laughs> 7.30. All right. Commissioner Bill Bratton and Deputy Commissioner John Miller, thanks to both of you.